Thank you, everybody, for joining us back here at Willow Biosciences Channel. We have a very special guest for you guys today as we sit here with the Chief Operating Officer of the company, Dr. Chris Savile. Chris, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we wanted to bring you on, really get to know you a little bit more, and then kind of dive into your role. But before we dive into your role, tell me about your past experience and like really what, what motivates you, why you're on the career path you are, and so on. Yeah, sounds good. So, you know, Mike, I started out, uh, I guess, in my academic career, I wanted to be, uh, you know, an organic chemist. I went to uh, uh, went to university for chemistry, and then I, you know, I thought I wanted to go to graduate school to become an organic, traditional synthetic organic chemistry. And kind of along the way, I got introduced to these wonderful things called enzymes mm -hmm. uh, that you could use to do, you know, really exquisite selective, exquisite chemistry uh, with, with using some of the chemistry from nature um, and opted to go toward really developing bio-based processes uh, all the way back and through my PhD, um, developing enzymes for, or these, you know, or they're, they're nature's catalysts essentially for doing chemical transformations and making them work under environments that you don't normally work in. Um, went directly out of my PhD into working for a company at, uh, called Codexis for about uh, 10 years and one of the premier enzyme engineering companies at the time, you know, worked in a variety of technical and commercial roles. And we were really focused on pretty much doing exactly what I, I, I'd, I'd done in my PhD, which was developing nature's catalyst, biocatalyst enzymes for doing chemical transformations. Uh, we did some amazing things uh, at the company and, and developed some strategies for engineering these, these enzymes to function in conditions they don't normally do, do chemistries they don't, don't normally do. Mm -hmm. um, after about 10 years of doing, doing that, uh, enzymes, I should say, so they do one transformation. They do you know, substrate to product. And what, what I really wanted to focus on was doing more complex chemistry. So, you know, bringing some of the strategies that we had developed for doing rapid enzyme engineering to, to building whole pathways and strains so that you could do, you know, a cascade of reaction within, within an organism to produce complex molecules from very simple raw materials. And then mm. uh, I joined a company called Entrexon for four years to really do that, to building organisms to produce fine chemicals, making the organisms produce things they don't normally produce. Uh, and then about four years ago, I joined Willow from, from day one um, to, to do similar things for engineering organisms to, to produce a variety of different chemicals. In the last four years, we've really been focused on producing uh, plant-derived molecules such as cannabinoids um, mm -hmm. through, through precision fermentation. All right. So let me jump in there for a second. So then what really drew you into Willow Biosciences? What was the reason behind you being like, all right, this is a company I want to get involved with for sure? Yeah, so it's, it, it was a, I would say a variety of things. So, I mean, I'm really passionate about making, developing bio-based processes and getting engineering organisms to produce molecules they don't normally produce. So that that's one. You can do that in a number of different companies in the space and there are a number of good companies in the space. What really brought me in was the opportunity to build these sites and the group uh, from the ground up. So when Willow Biosciences started, we didn't have a facility uh, we're based in the San Francisco Bay Area, Mountain View, California. We didn't have a site here in the Bay Area. Um, part of the goal was we really did want to build a site in the San Francisco Bay Area to, to leverage and exploit the human capital that is here, the experience and knowledge, you, you, you know, that is, I would say, second to none really in the space. You know, there's San Francisco, Boston are kind of the two big hubs in San Diego uh, as well. But this is the biggest one for industrial biotech. We wanted to, to leverage that human capital. And so it was really the opportunity to build it from the ground up, hire a team that had a similar mindset, a similar type of approach to engineering organisms, uh, developing rapid methods for engineering the organisms, developing the processes, and, and building it uh, ground up. And, and that's what we've done over the past almost four years now. We built a uh, a very a small but very efficient, nimble team here uh, in the Bay Area for for doing just that. So that that was what it was. Um, you know, it was kind of a, you know, a dream, I guess. You know, come true of of getting to do what I'm passionate about and also getting to build the organization from the ground up. 
Yeah, definitely. The, the sooner you get involved with those things, it's very rewarding as you kind of build. And as you said, keeping a swift and nimble ship, I'm sure you wear, wear a lot of hats under you, under the title of Chief Operations Officer now. So I guess diving a bit more into that, if you can, tell me about some of the obstacles you face on the day-to-day or the things you handle, so to speak. Yeah, it's uh, it's across the board, really, in the role, which is, you know, it's fun. I, I'm not really sure sometimes what hat I'm going to be wearing in the day, but um, it's across the board from, you know, managing the site, uh, working closely with R&D and over, overseeing R&D, um, overseeing R&D on the, on the various programs, both internal and externally partnered programs, managing customer relationships, uh, managing our contract manufacturing organizations, because we don't manufacture, we develop the processes and the strains, but we work with our contract manufacturing partners to scale our processes and produce products. So managing those, uh, managing our quality team for testing and release of, of product. Uh, but we're still a small company. I mean, there, we're only 31 people now and 25 in, in R&D. So if I need to go in to sweep the floor in the lab, I'll go in and sweep the floor as well. It's yeah. We're still small and we're still trying to be operating lean and efficiently. And if I can jump in to, to help, um, then I will. But it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's a variety. It's a variety of uh, responsibilities with the role. It's fun. Good. Yeah. And from there, so the year's kind of wrapping up now. Um, How do you feel like it went overall and and what are you kind of excited about going into 2023? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, 2022, I think from an operations perspective was very successful. Um, uh, That's not reflected in our stock price, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> unfortunately but you know it takes time for for the you know the value to be realized there but the operationally it's been quite good so i think earlier in the year as we came to the same conclusion of the number of companies that um, the regulations around cannabinoids were really kind of slowing the uptake of, of product and, and development of that of that market um, but we didn't just set out when we when we started Willow, we didn't just set out to become a cannabis company or develop or produce cannabinoids. We set out to develop a platform that could produce uh, chemicals or and, and functional, you know, primarily functional ingredients so that we we could develop hosts and enzymes for production of um, various ingredients, the platform to do that. And we had done that. But and we really didn't start to broaden our portfolio until early. 2022. Um, we wanted to expand to different molecules, classes of compounds outside of cannabinoids. We've done that. We wanted to bring on some partnerships as well so that we could accelerate the time to, to commercial scale to bring those products to market. You, you don't always get the you know as much value through a partnership as you could by yourself, but you de-risk it by bringing someone on board that understands the market and knows how to get the product to market and can sell it scale it and sell it much faster. Yeah. Uh, over the year, we've done that. We, we've, dare I say, pivoted um, to broader class of compounds, broader, more diverse portfolio, brought on some partnerships. And, um, you know, I know we've actually consolidated our organi- organization under one roof as well over the past year so that we can be more, make more, uh, be more operationally efficient. Mm-hmm. So on the operations side, it's I would say it's been a very successful year. We and we you know we've gone from having very focused on one class of compounds to now working on on um, yeah, five five classes, two two of which two programs of which are partnered. Um, we have kind of a clear sight on how they'll be scaled and commercialized. Two are internal uh, that we may look to partner in the future or take to market ourselves. And then we have our cannabinoid portfolio, still our lead compound CBG, which we're manufacturing uh, at scale. So operationally things have gone really quite smoothly um, given you know some of the, the, the regulatory and, and market changes related to cannabinoids. I'm quite proud of what we've accomplished as an operations in, in 2022. We've become smaller, but we've become more efficient and productive mm-hmm. in 2022, which is kind of a rare, I think, you know, a, a rare result. Now, now going into 2023, I'm really excited about because we now have that platform in place. We have that mindset. We have the people in place to execute on the variety, a variety of different programs going forward. So we have our partner programs that we're looking 
to to uh, take to the next stage of you know, scaling and manufacturing later in 2023, bringing on some new programs as well to make uh, some complex natural products from from nature with various functional ingredients. Uh, you know, continuing to to get our current product, you know, optimize the efficiency of that process so we can realize some gains from from you know lowering the cost of goods and, and just continuing to grow the business. So you know, we have everything in place now to bring on new programs, bring on new products, to really diversify the portfolio and continue to to grow and scale the business accordingly. So I, it's 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 an exciting time. Yeah, wonderful, Chris. Well, thank you for that rundown of 2022. And it does sound like there's a lot of exciting things coming in 2023. And we hope everybody here watching continues to follow us for that journey. And of course, Dr. Chris Saville, thank you again for coming out. If anyone has any questions, don't be afraid to send them over. But for now, any closing words before we go? Uh, no, that's all. Thanks for your time, Mike. I appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you so much. And please have a wonderful day.